All right, guys, just I thought I put the video changing my uh, this is not good low light, but uh, I'm swapping out my uh, sway bar in links. Um, see if that helps my suspension out a little bit. I, uh, I'm going back to the shorter links, the links that came on from the factory. I, uh, I got the longer links, and uh, to tell you the truth, I, my sway bar actually might be bent. I don't know. But uh, I know I had some trouble when I s switched from the shorter links to the longer links. I know, uh, I first of all, I had trouble putting them on. I had to almost jack the truck up to put them on. Um, maybe the shorter links will help. Um, I'm hoping they'll help. Um, but, uh, I just remember having a really hard time getting the short, uh, getting the, uh, getting the links on, um, uh, the longer links, um, on. Um, uh, hopefully this goes pretty, pretty easy. I mean, just at least these, uh, I think it's a 14 millimeter top and bottom. Got a 14 millimeter wrench and a, and a, uh, 9 16 socket. And, uh, get you back after I get this off. I do know that, uh, from the times that I've had, I dropped the, uh, taking the sway bar off, the front suspension is a lot softer. Uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing how much that sway bar stiffens up the front. It's kind of unreal, to be honest. Uh, I'm kind of wondering how it will drive without a sway bar, but I, I don't want to do that with it being independent probably be too soft but uh that might be where some of my rough ride is coming from my it could be my sway bar and my sway bar could be bent um i don't know but uh we'll see um but yeah you push on it right now and push on it, it barely goes down then again i'm only using one hand but uh i know when i'm jacking it up with the jack Jack it up with the jack, it goes up a little bit, and then it starts lifting the truck up. Take the sway bar off, it almost tucks the tire, and then then it starts uh, coming off the ground. Uh, well, coming off the ground. If if I have it on uh, the frame wheel on jack on jack stands, uh, jack it up just a little bit, the tire comes off up, up off the ground, and then it lifts up in the air. Uh, when I don't have the sway bar connected, and it's on jack jack stands. I jack it up a little bit, and it's still not where it would be lifting up with the sway bar on. I keep on jacking it up, and almost it almost stuffs the tire, and then it continues going up. So part of my rough ride could be my sway bar. I don't know, but anyway, let's get this done. I'll be back. And there you go, got them off. And you can see the link difference. About an inch. It's about an inch. It ends about. It's about right here. About right here. That's where the other one. That's where the thread starts. So once you uh, tighten it down, probably be about right here. Or so. But uh, I don't know. This is some upgraded. This is what the four wheel drives have. The four wheel drives have a long one. Um, at least my, my buddies does. Most of the four-wheel drives I've seen have the, the longer sleeve. Um, but, uh, I don't know, we'll see. It's a little softer. Um, I mean, of course, I'm on a, I'm on a decline with a bumper and a tire carrier in the back, so, plus it's an SUV, so you got all that other weight in the back. But, I mean, you can already tell some difference. But, uh, I know the sway, the sway bar isn't fully limiting the travel. It is a, I do have a coil spacer on here. Uh, coil spacer is the main reason the front ends, uh, the main reason the front end is, uh, tight. I think this coil might have come up seated. I know I do have a problem on the passenger side of uh, of the uh, suspension um, 
not relaxing. Um, I've had that problem for a while. The suspension that after you drive it and you stop driving it, sometimes the suspension's uh not real, not in its relaxed position. It's uh 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 overextended and stays overextended. Um um uh, for where it wouldn't be while you're driving. Um Yeah, I'm either getting slightly more lift with the coil spacer on that side than I am the other side, or it's something slightly binding. I don't know. Uh, but the fix that you just get on the front end and jump up and down are the uh, same thing you would do if you were uh, on any other vehicle. You'd get under the front of the bumper and just joust it uh, a couple times and make the suspension relax. Uh, when you align something, that's a, a good thing to do. When you're aligning it, uh, Joust the suspension up and down every once in a while to get the everything all settled down, but uh, yeah, I just I have a slight problem with the passenger side sometimes sticking up in the air. Um, well, sticking up in the air, sticking farther down than it should be in in its relaxed position, so it's not in its relaxed position. Uh, so one thing I got to make sure they do when they align it is make sure they uh, get it in the relaxed position that it's supposed to be when they align it, or it'll be a slight or or, or it will be slightly off alignment. But to be honest, anything's better than what it is right now. I mean, the toe's completely wrong. I spent about an hour and a half out here uh, months ago trying to get this thing straight, and I could not get it straight. So anyway, I'll be back when I get it installed. And this is why I take my sway bars bent. You see on this side, Everything's down. It's touching. I don't have the uh, bolt and stuff in the bottom. Um, um, I do need to get those replaced. They should should be under warranty. But come over here. Look at this side. See that gap? Right, it's focusing on the outside. I don't know how where you're, where you're going to see that. I can't really see what you're seeing. There's about is that a roughly an inch right there? That's all the way that's all the way down. That's all the way down on this side. And there's a gap. There's a gap on this side. Or on that side. That side's all the way down flat. That is why I think there. That's why I think there. My sweat bar's bent. Actually, as a matter of fact, it is bent. I mean, you can see the video evidence right there. So, I am thinking that's one reason that my ride is so harsh in the front uh, not the only reason I got coil spacers it's it, it, you're taking a stock coil compressing it even more uh, to get that extra two inches and in doing so um, in doing so the rods gonna be harsher that's that's just the nature of it but I think mine is extra harsh because my sway bar is bent. Um, either that, either that, or I don't know. I'm looking. I don't know how well y'all gonna see that. I'm looking at the two uh, lower control arms. I'm trying to see if they're both uh, the same length off the... Well, they're going to be both the same length off the ground, but I'm wondering if they're both the same down travel length, which I don't think they are. So it's either either my sway bar's bent or, or I'm getting extra lift on the, pa on the passenger side for some reason. I think it's always been like that. Even with, I think with my old spacers, I was getting more lift on the passenger side than I was on the driver's side for some reason. 
Um, I don't know, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. It's only gonna last me about another year anyway, because I'm gonna saw the axle on it eventually. So, anyway, come back after it's installed. It was still the same, 14 at the top, 9 sixteenths at the bottom. 14 top and bottom, but 9 sixteenths was easier to fit on the impact. But, we'll see how that turns out. Um, don't know. We'll be able to tell until I actually got it. But yeah. behind that one. You can barely fit a finger behind the other one. But I think there's always been that problem to be honest. At least when I when I sp switch spacers. Uh, but I like these spacers a lot better than those other spacers. Those other cast spacers cracked. And uh, yeah. It wouldn't have been good if they actually completely cracked and crumbled go down the road. Yeah. Ones I got now are steel uh, welded together, and they're above the coil, not below the coil, so that's that's better too. But uh, yeah, well, see how it goes more. Like I said, I'll send up send an update. Uh, probably do an update sometime tomorrow or Saturday about how the uh, how the alignment went, <clears throat> but. Uh, yeah. Don't think, uh, I don't know. I don't know about that pul the pulse board. It might not even be, to be honest, it's probably not even the pulse board. It's probably actually my multifunction switch on the dash. I got one. Just haven't put it in yet because it's a big, bigger job than I thought it would be. You gotta take the, uh, steering, steering, uh, Oh, uh, you gotta take the whole lower dash part, and then get to the uh, the block connector, the big block that's got connector that's got three different connectors on it below the steering column. And uh, since installing my alarm, it's 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 not that bad. Um, I just don't want to mess with it all right now. Um, it's a couple it's a couple hour job anyway, but a couple hours probably turn into five hours or six hours, whatever. But uh. Yeah, I got a new multifunction switch. I got a new pulse board, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, it might not even be the pulse board. Um, anyway, talk to you all later.